Hello and welcome to a new car review video on the channel and welcome to the Porsche Panamera Turbo S e-hybrid Sport Turismo. <laughs> a lot to remember there uh, and I got it right with the first take, that's pretty good. Now the Panamera has been a car that I've been looking forward to uh, testing for a while because uh, it's a little bit of an unusual one maybe in the Porsche range that arguably it's a little bit of a, a sleeper or it's kind of forgotten about by some people maybe. It's amazingly hot today um, as you can probably tell I'm sweating a little bit uh, it's suddenly uh, got hot all of a sudden summer has arrived in the UK. But anyway let's get back on the road uh, back up to Leicester and uh, spend a bit of time with the car and then I can give you uh, some considered opinion. So let's go. YouTuber. <laughs> So you join me about five days later in and around my favourite roads in Leicestershire around Bradgate Park. I've had quite a lot of seat time in the Panamera this week and I've also done sort of like local commuting and I've done long journeys as well. So the Gen 2 car that came along in 2016 based on the 971 chassis had a lot clearer visual link, at, uh, certainly at the back, to the 911. It was a lot more curvaceous and a lot more sort of sporting. So a much nicer tie-in and a much sort of lighter, more resolved uh, Porsche-like back. This is still technically the sort of Gen 2, but it's had a lot of refresh and certainly a recent refresh inside and outside. The Sports Turismo part is the sort of estate rear end that we've got, which looks kind of very handsome. Uh, and that first debuted in 2017 at the Geneva Motor Show. As well as that improved rear end, I think the Gen 2 car has got a lot better with age. We've kind of got used to it. And I think the subtle changes that Porsche has made uh, have really helped the look of the car. It's a really handsome looking thing now. I think the front end looks great. It's really uh, noticeably Porsche. And I think it's got a lot of presence as well. It is noticeably bigger than a lot of other cars. When you see a Panamera in the flesh, which is not that often uh, in the UK, you do kind of notice it, it seems like a, a scale up from every other estate car that you've seen. And I think that certainly helps with the kind of luxury quality feel that you get from this car. It does sh share the chassis uh, with the Continental GT Bentley. So you certainly have that sort of waft feel and you have that kind of um, sort of large statesman-like luxury uh, feel to it. Certainly when you're pottering around, maybe not so much when you're pressing on, but we'll talk about that in a moment. A lot of people say that the estate car is the better looking version of, the, of a regular saloon. If you look at the RS6 Avant, yeah, that's a very handsome looking car. If you look at the Taycan uh, Sports Turismo as well, I think that looks cooler. But with this, I feel, probably quite controversially, that it's the other way around with this. I think because they did so much work at getting that sort of back looking really sporting and like a 911, this goes back to it looking a little bit dumpy maybe. Most angles it looks fine and it looks really cool, but certainly when you look at it like this, uh, in this B-roll I'll put on, the 21 inch wheel looks quite small and you've got quite a lot of visual weight just above that rear wheel, which just looks a little bit odd. So. Yeah, maybe it's one. It's the one estate that where the saloon kind of beats it on looks. Let me know in the comments if you agree. 
As I mentioned then, overall, this generation has kind of been around since 2016. So I was sort of worried that I might find the interior a little bit dated, certainly as I've been lucky enough to be hopping in and out of different Porsches. But I'm really pleased to say that it feels absolutely bang up to date. The refresh that they've done in here obviously works. You've got uh, the latest upgrades of the PCM, beautiful kind of analog and digital mixed uh, main uh, instrument binnacle as well so there's nothing about it that feels you know sort of slightly last generation whereas I did feel that like with the Cayman now that it seems like it's 991911 generation rather than 992 but no this feels bang up to date and feels really high quality. I do love that analog and digital mix that you get on this instrument binnacle. The, the rev counter uh, being a good old fashioned needle looks really cool. And then also the digital displays that you can switch to different modes as well. I'm always looking at how much, how much energy I'm putting into the battery because it's a really cool graphic. I love all the kind of acid green accents that we've got on the instruments as well. The tack needle, uh, the flow of the battery, the clock the sports chrono in the middle as well and the acid green badges on the back and on the side for e-hybrid I think that's really cool because it reminds me of the acid green that we saw on the 918 hybrid yeah it's pretty cool so let's go through some figures then we've got a 4 litre twin turbo V8 and it's the same one that's used in the KN Turbo GT and it's also a variant of the one that's used in the Audi RS6 but obviously with this one we've also got the e-hybrid electric motor Maximum power output of the engine is 571 horsepower and 770 newton meters of torque at 2,100 to 4,500 revs. Max power output of the motor is 136 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. So if we add those together, we've got a combined power of 700 horsepower and 870 newton meters of torque. Now that figure sounds a bit down. Uh, but they've had to limit that because otherwise it would just tear the gearbox to pieces. You've got a 17.9 kilowatt hour battery, which gives us a 30, 31 mile range. We've got all wheel drive and four wheel steer with an eight speed PDK gearbox. Thankfully, we've got Porsche stability management and we've got a top speed of 196 miles an hour, faster than the 911 992 GTS. So 0 to 60 time of 3.2 seconds, and that's 0 0.1 of a second faster than the GTS. So we've got some serious bragging rights here. And in this kind of spec sheet, it says we've got combined fuel consumption of 97.4 miles per gallon. We've got a luggage compartment that is 418 litres, which is pretty massive, kind of comparable uh, with an Audi A6, I suppose. And that, all, that goes up to 1,287 litres when you've got the seats folded. Now, it's a little bit down on the size of the boot in a non-e-hybrid version, but not enough that you'd really notice that much. And the fuel tank is down a little bit because of the e-hybrid as well. We've got 80 litres as opposed to 90 litres. So as I've said, it feels very luxury in here. It's, it's got some beautiful materials in terms of how this car's specced. I really like this two-tone. It really is the best of both worlds. I've, I've said before in other videos, I quite like lighter interiors now. But again, this is great because you've got a lighter interior sort of on the seats and lower down, but you've got black floor mats and black carpets, which is great uh, if you've got kids or you're going out into the countryside. You've got this lovely crayon sort of Alcantara or Race Tech roof lining. So it's basically black and crayon are the two colours that we've got in here. And you've got sort of darker caps on the tops of the doors as well, where the touch points are, so you're not going to leave sort of marks possibly on the lighter parts. And it's great that you've got a black dashboard uh, as well, so you don't get a lot of reflection. So it's really cleverly specced. This particular car is specced with the softer leather as well, and I think that adds to that luxury feel. There's, there is a bit of a vibe of Bentley in here, uh, so which I suppose in a way you don't expect, but I think this is very much that sort of crossover car where you've got all of the Porsche dynamics, but you've also, we've moved into that sort of luxury, uh, comfortable, uh, plush, wafty uh, sector as well, and the soft leather um, certainly helps with that. There's plenty of room in the back as well. I think the, uh, the Taycan does feel a tiny bit compromised uh, in terms of the space in the back. Uh, for a regular saloon car and I think also the entry and exit of the doors seems tighter. This does feel uh, like you've got 
more space in there. You have got sort of two specific uh, seats, so it's kind of mainly a four-seater, but there is the option to kind of sit slightly higher up in the middle uh, if you really need to. But yeah, I think lots of space, and also there's a little screen that the kids can play with, and this one's specced with USB-C, which again, went down really well. I think also as well the the, um, the 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 twin sunroof, or I'm not sure whether you could call it a, a pan roof, uh, because it's two uh, separate sunroofs. Again, adds to that airy feel in here, which makes it feel really nice. So, what's the drive like? When you press on, this thing really starts to shrink around you, and then it goes from being this kind of really sort of serene luxury car uh, to yes you're definitely driving a Porsche so it's got a great driving position and I think with this sort of update they've learnt a lot from the 992 uh, steering and the Taycan steering as well it's never going to be as interactive maybe as a 911 but it is quite surprising how interactive the steering is yeah through the corners it really weights up nicely I think compared to the 911 you're always going to feel a little bit removed from the action because you're in a big luxury car but I think it's it's amazing how close they've actually got this and to the feel of the 992 in particular. I think it's become a little bit of a cliche with cars like this but it really does, the faster you go it really does shrink around you as you drive and you kind of forget that you're driving this big uh, family kind of executive luxury car. I think obviously that's helped by the electronics as well as the chassis. We've got torque vectoring, uh, which is making me feel a bit like a hero. And we've also got four-wheel steer as well, which I think when you're pressing on, that does add that extra kind of bite as you turn into the corner and really helps the car keep its line despite its weight. I think the only thing is with the four-wheel steering, I have found it uh, a little bit unnatural at times when you're turning in and then you can feel the rear wheel steering helping you a little bit. I have kind of felt the back end almost overcorrect itself or fix my uh, stupid inputs, which did feel unnatural, but, uh, but yeah, I'm certainly grateful of it. One of the things I've noticed, and I do say this a lot about Porsches, is it does feel very sure-footed. It does feel completely planted in terms of it just soaking up the potholes, but then it feels planted at speed as well. I think, you know, there's no mistaking the fact a car with this stance is going to be better than an SUV. And I think the Panamera really benefits from its sort of low slung stance. I will say though, with this car, more than any other car that I've had equipped with PDK, I've not really used the paddles at all. I've really enjoyed just kind of letting the gearbox do its thing. When I'm pressing on as well, this car has so much performance and so much power that I haven't got time to kind of mess with the gears. I think my steering inputs and my, uh, my pedals inputs are the things that I want to concentrate on. Even though I think they're some of the nicest paddles that I've actually kind of felt on a Porsche. They feel lovely, really nice quality item, but yeah, haven't used them. Okay, so let's have a look at the, um, the spec sheet on this particular car and see what options this particular press car's got. So as standard, the price for a Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid Sport Turismo is £143,340. So on top of that, we've got the oak green paint, which is a paint to sample colour, which is £6,608. We've got two-tone leather in black and crayon, smooth finish leather, and that is £536, and I really like that. It's got adaptive sports seats in the front with 18-way electric adjustment uh, with a memory package as well. So you can program on the doors three different presets, which is £1,053. We've got sports design package with sports design side skirts. I can't say I actually noticed that, to be honest, but uh, you can see down the side there, £2,589. Exterior mirrors painted in the exterior colour, £335. Side window trims in black, high gloss. That seems to be quite popular on most of the press cars, and I do like it. £362. Uh, model designation painted in black, high gloss. I think that looks pretty cool as well, £179. Sports exhaust system, uh, including sports tailpipes, £2,537 in black. 21-inch Panamera exclusive design wheels painted in platinum silver, £411. That seems quite reasonable. 
tyre sealing compound and electric air compressor, £45. I would say that should be probably free, but uh, tinted LED main headlamps with matrix, beam including Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus, PDLS Plus, that's £1,166. Park Assist including surround view, I love that. You get the uh, bird's eye view of the car. Great when you've got £6,000 worth of paint that you don't want to scratch. £635. Adaptive cruise control, £1,455. Soft closed doors, £545. Ionizer, £215. Ambient lighting, which the kids love, £317. Means you can change the lighting to different colours inside and also you can set it to reflect the album cover of whatever you've got on the infotainment. So yeah, that's gone down really, really well with the kids. And we first saw that in the Taycan. Four zone automatic climate control, £700. And 86 pounds heated sports steering steering wheel which i do like i would always option that it's a zero cost option on this car which is pretty cool isofix child seat mounting points on the front 134 pounds uh, on the passenger seat that is electric roll-up sun blinds for rear side windows 491 pounds 230 volt socket in luggage compartment 125 pounds interior package in leather 1419 pounds and another popular one with the kids or people traveling in the back is a USB-C interface in the rear for charging all of your devices so that's 125 pounds so the total price for this press car is 165,408 pounds so you're looking at about 22,000 pounds worth of options but yeah certainly quite a few of those I would actually have because they're uh, they're pretty cool so that's the spec. So just going back to the ride then, we have got adaptive dampers as well, which is an interesting thing to mention. On the firmer setting, when we go into sport as well, it, you can feel it, it does firm it up that little bit, but it, it is quite nice that in the sort of softer setting, in the normal setting, we just go back to, uh, to luxury. And I've been really impressed. It does seem to have a nice sort of breadth to the adaptive damper. So the Panamera has got aluminium double wishbones at the front and it had those a long time before the GT3 did. And it's got aluminium multi-link rear suspension at the back. So it's got a pretty impressive setup. One of the things that surprised me, it just it flows down the road so beautifully. And I think that the, the weight actually helps that. The performance is absolutely eye-watering. I think in a number of ways it is actually quicker than the Herrera GTS. I think the 0 to 60 time is quicker, the overall top speed is quicker as well. It doesn't feel as quick as a Taycan because you've got that kind of instant torque all of the time. But Porsche have got around that, so if you do want to have that kind of Taycan type hit, obviously we've got uh, launch control which will give you that. But part of that is we've got this sports response button which picks the revs up and holds them at four to five thousand and it gives us 20 seconds to use that. So yeah, we've got the instant torque that you get with an electric Taycan. Porsche have found a way around you feeling, oh, it's not quite as quick as, quick as a, a Taycan because you've got torque all the time. And it's like, well, yeah, we can do that. Our party piece, sports response, 20 seconds of craziness. <laughs> I suppose in a way though, being a petrol head, uh, the power delivery does feel more natural, so it's something that you're more used to. The Taycan is quite otherworldly and slightly uh, vomit-inducing. The Porsche carbon ceramic brakes are absolutely massive, and of course they need to be uh, to stop this weight. They're cross-drilled, 420 millimeters at the front and 410 millimeters at the rear. There's total confidence in them. The sound from the 4-litre V8 is absolutely fantastic. If I just switch it into Sports Plus. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> We've got the Sports Exhaust as well, which obviously adds to that. It adds to the excitement so much. Maybe that's my age, maybe that's because I've always been a bit of a petrol head. But it feels exciting, but it also feels slightly naughty, which is part of the appeal. So the e-hybrid system is available on the 4, 4S and Turbo S. 
The use of the e-power mode uh, is pretty smooth and it integrates really nicely to the engine. The only thing that's slightly unusual if you haven't driven one before is when you're in e-hybrid mode how it, the engine will kick in or kick out even when you're on the motorway. Uh, so you go from regular revs that you expect on the motorway to zero and it can be sort of quite shocking. You think, what's happened to the engine? But uh, only the noise and the change in the dial is what you notice. Other than that, it's just completely seamless. I've really enjoyed using the electric only for sort of shorter trips, for my commute to work, which is less than 10 miles, and dropping the kids off, and also leaving the house in the morning. It's great just to kind of serenely sort of pootle about um, and not bothering anybody. I think, yeah, obviously it's going to be great because of all of the kind of legislation advantages that you can drive into this London uh, with no congestion charge and things like that. But I think we shouldn't underestimate the calmness and the, and the kind of tranquility that it brings to your commute. It's really cool. It def it's definitely got echoes of Taycan, obviously, because it's a similar kind of experience to that. The great thing is it doesn't want to jump into use of the engine as much as I thought it would as well. I think they've kind of refined that slightly that you can push the accelerator pedal to sort of 50% and you'll still only, you'll get uh, maximum torque from the motor but you'll still only use the electric motor in electric mode. If you go over 60% of the throttle the engine will start to kick in. I think Porsche say it will do about 90 miles an hour on the motorway uh, just in electric mode only which is pretty cool. I know that the, the motor is actually attached to the gearbox so you've kind of, the motor's almost got eight gears from the PDK. It allows it to do those higher speeds really, really efficiently. The other thing I like to do, which I get a weird sort of satisfaction from, is when I'm in hybrid auto, I like to go into the, the PCM and actually select the hybrid mode and set it to e-charge. So then I can actually use the engine as I'm driving along to charge the battery. So it's quite satisfying every time that you brake or if you're lifting off the accelerator, you can see the energy on the graphic going back into the battery. Obviously you can charge it at home as well. We've almost got, it looks quite cool because we've got what looks like two petrol flaps either side, but one's the electric and the other one's the, uh, the petrol uh, cap. But we can charge it at home. The battery is much smaller so it's much easier to charge at home, it doesn't take forever. Sometimes you can find that you never really have to plug it in at all, you can just kind of make sure that you're topping it up if you're on the motorway where you will be using the engine, but anytime you're not completely on the engine it's going to charge the battery up. I think at the moment e-hybrid systems seem like the better option uh, to use it every day. I think certainly if you're worried about the Taycan and you have range anxiety or you do a slightly longer commute, the e-hybrid approach does seem like the better option. Let's talk about the PCM. I do really love the PCMs on Porsches. This one is great. It's got a higher resolution screen than it had in the earlier Gen 2s. And I think it's had a bit of a graphics update because I was watching Carfection, Henry Catchpole review of this version when it came out about 18 months ago. And the actual kind of drive mode graphics look really quite crude. They look quite basic, but now we've got uh, a lovely kind of diagram of the, of the car and it all looks the latest PCM version, which is, is, uh, makes it feel really high tech, modern, up to date. I think it's probably one of the nicest things that you can say about any digital infotainment system is it just works in every way. The only small gripe I did have was I thought it was fiddly to get back to Apple CarPlay when I first started using it because you had to go right over the other side of the screen to the small Apple CarPlay icon. But after I've spent a bit more time with the car you realise it's just user error. In fact the, the home button that's right close to me here on the right hand side just has two little underlines to it and if you hit that once it goes to the to Porsche PCM and if you double click it or basically it flicks between the two so it's even easier than I thought it was. The car's smarter than I am. <laughs> so things I really like there. I think everybody's going to like the fact that you can kind of drive it anywhere. I think what's increasingly becoming quite worrying is that we've got we're getting zones in cities where you can't drive with particular cars so we've gone further uh, than the, the congestion charge now and this kind of even though we've got a V8 this kind of wafts through that we've not got to worry about any charges we can go anywhere and also we're doing our bit for the planet when we, when we switch it into EV mode and if we can do all of our commutes in that then that's pretty great. 
and I think the e-hybrid really does suit the car. I think it just adds that little bit more to that serenity and luxury that you, uh, that you get uh, when you switch it into EV only mode. Things I don't like? Well, for me, I still think it looks a little bit bloated uh, for a Porsche. That's just me though. I think it really depends on the, the type of buyer that you are. I think certainly people that I've spoken to, certainly people who are a little bit older, that's not being ageist, but they're not bothered by that. They are looking for more luxury rather than it being more, you know, kind of uh, RS6 aggressive. So, but for me, it does still look a little bit heavy at the back for a Porsche. I think the biggest thing that it's got to get going against it is the Taycan, because I think the Taycan has really shown that Porsche can make a really svelte, trendy, youthful, sexy looking estate car or saloon car as well. I think it's interesting, it's kind of where the Panamera came from, it almost felt as though they were holding back in terms of the styling so that it didn't tread on the toes of the 911. And then it seems as though kind of all bets were off with the Taycan because it wasn't going to tread on the toes of the 911 because it was an electric car so it was a very different proposition and it was kind of as though the designers were let loose to come up with this beautiful svelte uh, saloon and, and sports turismo whereas this still kind of carries that legacy maybe of it looking that sort of heavier car so it looks a very different proposition to the 911. I think people have also said about the air vents as well no people moan an awful lot about analog controls and digital controls I think Porsche's got the balance quite right but they have gone for the, the air ventilation, uh, closes and opens automatically, but you have to control the air ventilation on the PCM. But, so I can see what they've done. They've tried to reduce the number of buttons uh, because it was crazy in the first Panameras, um, but maybe not being able to instantly open the air vents does seem a little bit weird. So to sum up then, how do I feel about the Porsche Panamera Turbo S? e-hybrid Sport Turismo. Well, it's as I've said, it's eye-wateringly fast and the performance and the way it drives when you press on is thoroughly Porsche, surprisingly close to a 911 and quite a shocking difference to how it is when you're just taking it easy. And I think it does have that dual personality where it's one hell of a luxury car. I think if you were choosing this between uh, a Bentley Continental GT you would be surprised how close it is at being Bentley-like in terms of comfort, waftability and that, that luxury feel that you get from it. But then how crazily it can switch that into something that feels closer than to a 911 than it should do. One thing I will say is it does make me feel very grown up and I'm not 100% sure whether that's exactly what I want uh, from a Porsche. So would I buy one? Well, no, I don't think I would, but that's not me being negative about it. I just don't think it's the Porsche for me, even though I'm thoroughly impressed with it. I think I'm definitely more of a Porsche Taycan, Sport Turismo, uh, GTS kind of guy. The GTS has all the Alcantara kind of interior that I want. It has those kind of sexy uh, Q car sort of looks to it. And I think it's ju it just seems more youthful and more exciting to me personally. So should you buy one? And that's an interesting question, because I think if you clicked on this video, you're probably interested in the Panamera and you're probably thinking about buying one. And I would say that, yes, you should buy one. If you want one and this is the car, the Porsche that you've settled on, there's nothing wrong with it. It's great. You should buy it and throw in as a side dish that you can outpace pretty much everything on the road as well. <laughs> that's a pretty good side dish. So, yeah, best of both worlds. I suppose I would check out the other 15 Panamera variants just to make sure that that's not the niche of a niche that you fit into. Because, yeah, we're getting into bespoke territory. You don't really see many of these, but it also makes it feel like a bespoke luxury handmade suit. Throw in 15 variants and lots of other options, and this is going to be the most unique and individual car you could get, that, this side of, of it being hand-built. Okay, I can't resist. Maybe the sport response button just one more time. <laughs> That's about it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you get the chance and hit the notification bell as it lets you know when I produce a new video. Lots of Porsche content on the channel and a few other classic car videos and uh, other, other interesting makes of car. 
but thanks very much for watching and bye for now.